Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands is set to testify in the Frank Smith trial tomorrow. The government pushes ahead with its shantytown plan in the family islands. The opposition leader slamming government's decision to change counsel in that shantytown injunction matter. Welcome to our news and thanks for joining us. I'm Kyle Joaquin. Health Minister Dr. Dwayne Sands is expected to take the stand in the Frank Smith extortion trial tomorrow. Prosecutors told the court this afternoon that they will be calling Sands as their next witness. Also in court today, prosecutors sought to do damage control over testimony concerning the award for a second contract to Smith's accuser just three months after he was charged in 2017. Jasmine Brown tells us more. News that Sands would be taking the stand tomorrow came at the end of today's proceedings after the prosecution revealed that they would be calling him next. Sands will be the second high-ranking cabinet minister to testify in the Frank Smith extortion and bribery trial. National Security Minister Marvin Dames has also testified. In June, Dames revealed that Dr. Sands referred Hannah to him shortly after the Free National Movement came to power in May 2017. Sands is expected to begin his testimony once the defense wraps up its cross-examination of BTC mobile engineer Wade Colebrook. Prosecutors allege that Barbara Hanna, a cleaning company owner, paid $60,000 in bribes to Smith, who was the former Public Hospitals Authority chairman. Hanna has alleged that Smith demanded payments of $5,000 monthly from her for his assistance in getting the $500,000 annual contract. In prior proceedings, it was revealed that Sands approved the $1.8 million contract from Magic Touch Cleaning Company without the board's consideration. It was also revealed that according to the PHA policies, contracts over a certain value cannot be approved by the board and must be approved by the health minister. The Tenders Analysis Committee report that centers on the awarding of that contract was the focus of both the prosecution and defense teams today. Prosecutor Edward Jenkins QC submitted the document into evidence and questioned PHA legal advisor and board secretary Leslie Isaacs about the process. Isaacs testified that the report included details about the companies who bidded for the cleaning contract in 2017. She testified that the analysis committee recommended that Magic Touch be chosen to clean PMH despite the fact that they tendered the second lowest bid. Isaacs also testified that the company with the lowest bid was not chosen because the committee felt they only had experience cleaning smaller spaces and that their bid was unrealistic. Under cross-examination, defense attorney Katie Knight questioned Isaacs about the board's concern over the appearance of impropriety over the awarding of the contract to Hannah's company. Isaacs agreed that it was a break in procedure and that the board was so concerned that it ordered an internal audit. But Jenkins asserted that the irregularities did not taint the process, adding that he assured the Minister of Health will be attacked as he believes the defense thinks Sands did something grossly improper. Smith's trial on charges of bribery, extortion and misconduct in public office continues before Chief Magistrate Joanne Ferguson Pratt on Wednesday morning. Reporting for our news, I'm Jasmine Brown. All right, thanks, Jasmine. Well, the government has changed its legal representation in the ongoing shantytown litigation. This as the defendants in that case are threatening to hold the respondents in contempt of court. With more on this, here's Gillian Gray. The Attorney General's office has taken over legal representation in the ongoing shantytown case. While the Attorney General shied away from giving the specifics surrounding the difference of opinion that resulted in their separation with former lawyers Harvey Tynes QC and Robert Adams, he did say that his office is not afraid to face the shantytown residents in court. We will await the guidance of the court. We are not afraid to stand before the seat of justice and uh, to plead our case to the best of our ability on every single point alleged against the government. 
The attorneys representing the 177 Shantytown residents have alleged that the government issued new notices in August, which would have been in direct breach of the court injunction. They have given the government until Friday to respond to their concerns and have threatened to move to have the Prime Minister, the Minister of Labour, the Minister of Public Works and the Attorney General cited for contempt of court if a response is not received. We are in discussions with counsel for the other side and um, uh, we anticipate it will be amicably, uh, that aspect of the case will be amicably resolved. Chairman of the Shantytown Action Task Force, Dion Folks, confirmed that a letter was sent out by the Building Control Division. However, they are not certain if it's connected to the task force or if it's a part of the Ministry of Works regular notices. He said both he and the Minister of Works, Desmond Bannister, are actively looking into the matter. Now, although the removal of shantytowns in New Providence has been stalled, the government is pushing ahead with its planned shantytown survey in the Family Islands. Since the injunction, we have dissolved the Shantytown Action Task Force in New Providence, pursuant to the court order. We're very active in the Family Islands, we're active in Abaco. As a matter of fact, today a team is going on Elbow Key. On Saturday, the Labour Minister said they will announce the next phase of the initiative and also begin to explore alternative housing for residents, as that seems to be one of the major challenges. He added that their survey will give them a better idea of how many people live in shanty towns in Abaco. That will give us an idea of exactly what we are faced with in Abaco. Um, on Saturday, we are going to establish five subcommittees um, to, to continue to work in Abaco. The, the court injunction does not apply to the family islands. It only applies to New Providence. Before the court injunction, the Shantytown Action Task Force was in the final phases of its plan. Many Shantytown residents had already begun to find alternative accommodations. Folks said he is not aware if those residents have moved back since the injunction and added that the task force is simply trying to follow its mandate from the Prime Minister. Reporting for our news, I'm Gillian Gray. Well, opposition leader Philip Davis is slamming that change in attorneys in the judicial review of government's Shantytown policy. And Jared Hicks has more. Rudderless. Um, chaos, chaotic, and, and boil of confusion. That's how opposition leader Philip Davis described the state of the Attorney General's office on the heels of news that privately retained attorneys Harvey Tynes, QC, and Robert Adams would no longer be representing the government in the ongoing shantytown litigation. Davis says he was shocked by the change in counsel as he thought independent attorneys were hired due to a belief that the AG's office wasn't suited to handle the matter. That is alarming. Um, because the decision to, to farm out the work to, uh, to independent counsel suggested to me that the Attorney General had arrived at a position or a view that his office and those in his office were not sufficiently competent to deal with the work. With Bethel acknowledging that money may be owed to Tynes and Adams, Davis also questioned how much money was spent on the endeavor. If they engage counsel, and then counsel is disengaging themselves, that is a waste of funds. The Attorney General would have gotten advice from within his chambers. He obviously would have gotten advice from, the, from independent counsel. Now, when a client does not agree with the advice from his counsel, then that client will have some challenges, I would think. Davis spoke highly of those now disengaged attorneys and suggested that Bethel was trying to dictate to them how they should handle the case. Lawyers of the ilk of Robert Adams and, and Harvey Times will not be too concerned of the, the, the political aspect of it. He, they'll be more concerned about the issues of law and, and um, the Attorney General may, may be more concerned about the political consequences of, of the matter. They will not be. So where would, I, where would I suspect the issues might be? It might be where, where they wanted to tell counsel how to conduct their case instead of allowing counsel to decide how the case ought to be conducted.
The government retained Tynes and Adams to defend it against a judicial review application filed by a company called Respect Our Homes Limited and 177 shantytown residents who claim government acted illegally when they ordered them to leave their communities. Reporting for Our News, I'm Jared Higgs. All right, thanks, Jared. Well, the sounds of gunshots pierced the morning air, leaving Plantall Street residents grappling with yet another tragedy in the inner city community. In the end, one man was left, left dead, slumped over in a light green Ford Explorer. As a result of this information, uh, we commenced an intense investigation. Uh, so far, we can only say uh, the, that the body received a apparent gunshot wound uh, to the upper uh, torso. Uh, we don't have any additional information as to the motive for this latest homicide. But we are appealing to members of the public uh, who live in this area or who may have been passing the area at the time of the incident to contact the police. The victim, according to Chief Superintendent Solomon Cash, had been shot multiple times. He was said to have been a resident of that area. Screams of loved ones rang through the air as his body was placed in the hearse. It's too early in the investigation for us to determine whether or not the motive may have been a robbery. Uh, but we can tell you uh, that the body uh, was riddled with a um, gunshot. Still to come on our news, the opposition leader calls for more transparency from government with a recent contract. Plus, day two of the new school year, just as exciting as day one for these kids. Stay tuned.